Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's tutorial we'll be working on how to paint three simple nature inspired paintings with watercolours. These are easy designs to paint and lots of fun. The watercolour set that I'm using today is from Arteza. This is not a sponsored video but they did send me this set to use and I thank them very much for supporting my channel. This is a half pan set and it comes with 36 vibrant colours. It comes in a metal tin with plenty of room for mixing colours and a water brush. The paints are really nice, they're very pigmented, the colours are activated very quickly and they have a really good range of colours. I'll also be using the Arteza 300 gram watercolour paper. If you'd like to check out the supplies that I'm using, there's a link to the Arteza website in the description box below. You can, of course, use whatever watercolours, whatever brand that you have at home to follow along with the tutorial today. So grab your paints, paper and brushes and now let's get started. For the first painting, I'm starting out by taping down the paper. I'm using washi tape today, but you could also use masking tape or painter's tape. Then, using a circular template, I'm going to very lightly trace a circle in the centre of the paper. I'm using a green pencil so that the lines will be invisible later on when I paint on top of the pencil line with green paint. You can use anything you like as a template, a glass, a CD, a small plate, anything that you have on hand to create a circle template. The idea for this first painting is to create a reef. I'm going to be creating my reef out of leaves. You could of course do flowers or grasses, anything that you'd like, but by starting out with a circle as a base, it's really easy to then construct your reef around the outside of the circle. Now apart from the circle, there's no sketching or outlining involved in any of these paintings. I'm just going to be using the paints and a brush. So starting with a light green colour, I'm going to follow the circle outline and paint the reef. I'm going slowly, tracing the green line with the paintbrush and then pulling the paint out to create the leaves coming out from that green line. I like to go nice and slowly and turn the paper as I work, just so that I have the most comfortable angle to paint and also so that I'm not dragging my sleeve or my arm across the wet paint. I'm also slightly varying the size and the angle of the leaves as well just to add a little bit more interest as I work my way round. Once I've gone round the entire reef I can add in any extra details. Here I'm dabbing in some little yellow dots, these could represent flowers or buds on the reef. I also added in some little strokes of blue as well and once I'd got that first layer of colour down I'm adding in a little bit of shading into the leaves. This painting is pretty simple to paint and it's very easy to adapt and to vary depending on what you want to paint. I'm using green and yellow and a little blue here, but you could also use oranges and browns and make an autumnal themed reef. You could paint flowers around the outside instead of leaves. It's a very simple design to adapt and to change. And it also, I think, would make a really nice greeting card design and it doesn't take too long to paint and you could add a name or a sentiment to the centre of the reef and make it a greetings card. The final step was to add a few white highlights and that's the first painting completed. As I said, it's a pretty simple design but I think it looks really nice and I like the white background and the no outlines on the paintings. But with all of these tutorials, you can go ahead and add outlines if you'd prefer. For the second painting, I'm going to be working on some lavender and I'm starting with drawing a line of green paint and then drawing on the leaves. I like to load my brush up with plenty of paint for this so I can keep going for a while without having to reload the brush. I like to pull the leaves out of the stem using the brush and the water to move the paint and to form my leaves as I'm working up the lavender stem. After painting the three leaves, I wash my brush and pick up some purple. To create the lavender head, I'm painting a series of shapes. They're a little bit like a squashed oval or a seed shape. And I'm painting these slightly overlapping each other and tapering slightly towards the top of the lavender head. I've kept the footage in this video all real time, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing more clearly. For the second plant, I'm just repeating the same steps I did for the first one, starting out with a green line, curving it over and upwards, then drawing the leaves out from that line, and then building the main lavender head at the end of the stem, layering the shapes on top of each other, and slightly bending the shape of the lavender head as well, just so that it has a nice natural curve to it. 
Once the first paint was dry, I went in and added some little dabs of blue here and there to places at the very end of the lavender head. And this is to add in the actual little flowers. I'm not aiming for lots of detail here, I'm just adding tiny dabs of paint to indicate where the flowers are and to make sure the plant is recognisable as lavender. This is something I think is very appealing about these sorts of very simple floral or nature paintings. They don't have to be very detailed, you can just paint a couple of very simple shapes, a couple of colours and even when it's very simple like that, the plants can still be recognisable. I decided here to add a couple of extra sprigs to this mini arrangement and I used some blue paint to paint a sprig. It's not any plant in particular, it's just something to complement but not overshadow the lavender. I've set it behind the lavender and painted it to have three little branches and this is because often when arranging flowers, working in odd numbers work best and so I wanted to carry that through into the painting arrangement as well. I then went in and added a little shading to the lavender head by dabbing in a mix of darker purple and I also added a darker green into the leaves as well. As always, I finished off the painting with some white highlights. I think this would make a really nice greeting card design as well, especially perhaps for Mother's Day. If I was making this as a greetings card, then I would cut the watercolour paper down to the size of my my card but double the size of the width so that after painting on one side I could simply fold the watercolour paper in half and then have a beautiful card to give to someone. For the final painting I'm working on a vase of flowers. I'm starting with blocking out the basic vase shape. You could make yours look a little bit more elegant or base the shape of the vase on a flower vase that you have already in your house or you could shape it more to be like a mason jar, however you like. To keep it simple here, I'm just painting a roughly rectangular shape in a blue colour and then spreading the water around to create uh, and fill in the vase. I like to draw the shape with the paintbrush first, just draw the basic outline and then fill it in. And then it's time to paint the flowers. You can have lots of fun with this step here and experiment with different shapes and brush strokes to create your flower arrangement. Again, I'm not worrying about the details here. I just want to create rough shapes that are recognisable as flowers, but they don't need to be detailed or realistic. I began with the yellow and painted in lots of individual brush strokes to create the yellow flowers. I'm working with one colour at a time here and painting a few flowers scattered over the page. This way I can make sure that the colours are evenly spread and I can stop one colour bunching up in one corner and I can also see how the layout of the flower arrangement is coming as I'm painting and to make sure that I'm also spreading evenly the different flowers of different sizes as well. Then I moved on to a much larger petaled pink flower and I'm placing that around the page as well. I like to paint certain flowers underneath the previous ones, this adds a little bit more interest, but I am leaving a little bit of white in between all the flowers and most of the flower petals as well. You don't have to do this step, I like how it looks, but you can leave a white line or paint the colours right next to each other, it's up to you. If you do end up painting the colours right up next to each other, make sure the first colour the first flower is dry or you'll get the colours bleeding into each other. After the pink flowers I went in with a purple colour and added a few groups of dots. These could indicate a very delicate flower or a little flower cluster in the arrangement. I then added in some leaves and stalks with a green and I'm using this colour to fill in areas between the flowers and just to fill up any areas that I couldn't fit a flower into and just to complete the arrangement. I then left everything to dry and then added a few shadows or darker patches of colour. A little bit of orange into the yellow flowers, a little bit of darker pink into the pink flowers and so on. I also added a darker shadow line to the edge of the vase with a darker blue as well. Then finally with the white paint pen I'm adding in some highlights to the arrangement and the vase. And that's the third painting completed, it's bright and colourful and fun to paint. All three of these paintings were quite quick to paint, you don't need to do any sketching except for the circular template we drew at the beginning, apart from that there's no sketching or outlining, it's all done with a paintbrush and paint. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial, leave me a comment down below and let us know which one of these paintings you liked best and also let me know if you've tried out any of these paintings for yourself. 
Thank you again to our teaser for sending me these lovely paints and paper to use in today's video. If you're interested in these paints, there's a link to them in the description box below, along with a full list of supplies that I used. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when I post a new video. Have a creative day everyone and I will see you next time.